Okay, team, we're going to start with this one right here. And, and we're getting, you know, these are the harder questions that are going to end off part one. So definitely if you're a reading specialist, you know, these are for you. Or if you're you're taking a regular reading test like the 190 or the science of teaching reading, this is just going to be, you know, slightly more challenging. But but good practice. I think these are all, team, I think these are all great practice, okay? But let's take a look at this here. You can tell by the length. It's got that length that wordiness, that, that linguistic complexity. So it, it's just a lot more detail. You can just look at it and see those things. These are those new, more challenging questions that you're seeing on all these exams, especially when you're getting to those upper levels, you know, like a reading specialist exam. They, they're going to give you more complex questions. So I want you to take a moment and I want you to, to read this over and just gauge how long this is going to take you. On the day of the test, team, you have about on average, two minutes per question. Now, some questions, maybe you're going to take you three minutes to do, maybe four minutes to do. And other questions, maybe you do them in 30 seconds. So, so it's, you know, there's some flexibility there. But um, I do want you to take your time right now, read it, and just gauge where you are with this. Are you reading this at three minutes? You know, are you reading it somewhere between three and two or between two and, and one? Just take a moment and, and read it and, and make that evaluation for yourself. And we'll talk about it, okay? Go ahead, read it now, go. Unread it. <laughs> or if you're still reading, put me on pause and then unpause. I'm gonna read it. I thought I'd read this one. And so I'm gonna read it real quick. It says here, a reading specialist has been working with a group of first grade students. Let me circle first grade students. Remember that grade? I always go are are not teaching yet or they're not teaching first graders and so it's uh they may be coming in teaching seventh graders and and they're now they have a question on first graders and they're not so sure how to place it so if we look at these early years right i'm gonna go pre-k that's the years before kindergarten right we have what we could have three to four four to five then we have kindergarten very, very important, maybe five to six. And then we have, you know, first grade and on. So it's first grade and on six, six to seven ish. Okay. Now this is, this is, you know, where we are. We are right there. Okay. Now uh, let's keep going. So this teacher is working with this group of first graders, beginner readers who score in the 25th percentile in phonemic awareness. What does that mean? It means that they're behind. Okay. And they're doing a universal screening test. So they're doing one of those tests that you do either at the beginning of the year or as the students come into a school. It's really used to uh, measure where they are uh, to help uh, plan instruction and to help them. Progress monitoring data indicates that the students can orally segment three phoneme words and can regular and, and read regular CVC words. So three phoneme words that and CVC words, three phoneme words are like what? Those are like the words that we saw like ship that has one, two, three phonemes, even though it has a constant diagraph. What it's saying is that a constant diagraph is two constants that make one sound. Even though it has a constant diagraph, um, it only has three sounds. So that's a three phoneme word or CVC words. CVC words are like a cat, constant vowel constant. I'm just reviewing this stuff for that teacher out there that needs to review. Okay, uh, if you want to fast forward this, you can. Uh, the reading special, so they can do these basic words, right? Three, three phoneme words and CVC words, all right? Uh, the specialist uh, now wants to help them progress to four phoneme words that contain an initial consonant blend. So what's that? Now, we're, we're not quite there. We're going to talk about all these things when we get to phonics. So right now, we're kind of stepping out um, of phonemic awareness and doing a little phonics, but but uh, initial consonant blend could be like the word blend. <laughs> blend has an initial consonant blend. That would be sort of a, a C, C, V, C, C word, right? Consonant, constant, vowel, consonant, constant has an initial consonant blend. But let me give you a better one. Uh, 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 let's say uh, step. That's a good one. Step has a consonant blend. Constant, constant, vowel, constant. It has an initial, right? Initial, constant, blend. That's a great one. A C, C, V, C word. 
Got it? So they want to help them with these four phoneme words that contain an initial consonant blend, like step. The specialist selects a decodable text. A decodable text is a very basic text, uh, like the Bob, uh, the Bob books that we'll be talking about a little bit later on, that um, you know are systematic uh, in terms of you know they're getting more progressively harder with phonics. They go from easy. The most easy, like uh, CBC words, and beyond, and, and get a little bit harder. Um, okay, so they're going to select a decodable text for instruction that features these target words, such as frog. Okay, that would probably be the, been a better example to use. Frog, C C B C. There's the consonant blend. Which of the following pre-reading activities would be most effective for the reading specialist to support the students' re uh, decoding skills for developing phonemic awareness? So, so far in this activity, in this prep, we've talked about, you know, um, three, three phoneme words and, and CVC words, and now four phoneme words that have a consonant blend in the beginning, CCVC. And now we're really now focusing on, well, how can we like help them, not just with the decoding, but going back to the sound activity. So we've already come across several activities to help with decoding and really focus on within decoding the sound activity. Can you can you remember the one that we talked about we spent a lot of time on? Well, we spent a lot of time on this one here. We referenced this one here, right? Elconin boxes. Elconin boxes are that, that way of really explicitly reinforcing decoding and encoding. We can use Elconin boxes to for phoneme segmentation, right? We can help with that. F, R, A, G right? And then if we take that phone phonemic awareness activity, right? There's three sounds there. And then associate that with their letters. There's a f, r, a, g. Now what's happening here? Now the student is getting explicit practice with matching up sounds with letters. That's encoding. And, and this is reinforcing letters to sounds. That's decoding. So this type of activity where a student uses Elkonin boxes to reinforce the sound, the letter sound correspondence in words, like basic words like frog, would uh, be very helpful for a beginner reader with decoding, right? So this could be a great instructional strategy for a student that's having difficulty with decoding. And it's not just like words like frog. You could do this with like words with like a, a, a cluster, like a street. You notice a, a child is having different difficulty with a consonant blend. This is a great activity to help a student uh, get better at, you know, uh, words with consonant blends in them. Okay, let's go back, way back to the question. So it says, what's going to be the best activity to help them with decoding and help them with phonemic awareness? Is it to um, focus on um, pictures and just the initial blend? Um, you know, if you did that, well, first of all, the pictures, you're not doing letter sound correspondence, right? Uh, you're, you're, so that wouldn't be great because you want, you want the, you want them to see the letters and, and practice the decoding and the pictures would sort of, uh, um, remove part of the, part of that piece, the letter piece. And then you're only, you're only focusing on that initial sound <clears throat> or the initial blend. So it's almost like onset and rhyme. So, you know, that's, that's not going to work. Um, would it be this one right here? Segment the target words they encounter in the decodable text into onset and rhyme? No, that's too basic, right? You know, we want to go into the phonemic awareness zone. Onset and rhyme is taking a step back. How about this one right here? Generate a list of rhyming words that, tar that target words that, will, that they will encounter in the decodable text. I mean, this could be helpful. I mean, if you're, if you, I mean, I think this would be very helpful if you're using a, a decodable text that does include a lot of rhyming words to review them. But that's not really what we're focused on. We want to focus on an activity involving phonemic awareness. So we want to make sure this activity make sure, uh, has the student work with the individual phonemes in these CCVC words, right? So we want them to, we want to explicitly highlight the sounds that are in these decodable regular words, right? So what do we do? Well, we look for our friend. Remember our friend? 
this activity we said, if you want to develop this and help a student with phonics, a great activity is Elkonin boxes, right? And they have it set up here, moving discs in Elkonin boxes to segment and blend the sound in target for phoneme words they will encounter in the decodable text, right? Isn't that kind of what we've seen? And I want to go to the pictures here. So we have this one right here. There's actually one before it, this one right here, where they're using the Elkonin box and moving the discs or counters in. And, and uh, in this case, because we're working with phonics, we would include the word. So if we want it to be a, a phoneme graphing mapping activity and phoneme segmenting and, and sound letter uh, a mapping activity, we would include the letters with the sound boxes. Or at some point we would, we would uh, after we do the sound boxes, we would, we would spell it out, write it out. So that would reinforce uh, sounds to letters and letters to sounds, okay? You could do that with this one here. You could do that with this one here. But that type of activity would be a, a great instructional strategy uh, that you could use to help foster decoding and phonemic awareness. Now, I, wanna, I want to uh, just highlight something here. This is the reason why the answer is A. This is the reason why I chose this. You see this quick description of Elkonin boxes, right? You're going to be asked to come up with a whole bunch of instructional activities, especially when you come uh, reading team, reading specialist team. I'm talking to a lot of reading specialists. You're going to have to write in your essays about an instructional strategy that might help a student. And this case study is kind of giving you a lot of the language that you can to describe an activity. I mean, this sentence alone gives you a, a way of describing Elkonin boxes that you could put in your essay. And if you, if you chose to put some of this stuff in the essay, what vocab would you want to use? Maybe you'd want to include the discs or the counters and the Elkonin boxes. You want to mention that it's going to help segment and blend the sounds in the target word. Hey, your, if your target word has four phonemes, you should put it. Okay. And maybe you want to use that decodable text reference. And I think you should take a time and do a little e.g. comma and give an example. Do you see all the details that are here if you're describing Elkonin boxes in your essays? I mean, anyone that's reading your text, if they're reading your essays, they'll be like, whoa, there's an instructional strategy. They nailed it. Uh, you're using what they said to use. And this is, and you're giving the details of how many details here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, maybe you use a little bit of that. Maybe you use a little bit of that. I mean, you're going to blow them away if you borrow some of the language from these exams and put it in your essay. Now, I'll just stress this one more time. This activity is to help a student with decoding, especially if they're having difficulty with blends and clusters. So this could be a great activity if, that was, if, if that's what you were trying to help them with. If they were saying words like street and they were omitting some of the sounds, then this could be a great activity to help them, an Elkonin box activity to help them with that letter sound correspondence. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, we uh, Here's the answer. We got it from this reading specialist exam. The answer is A. And look, we got some vocab that's embedded in here. Uh, a lot of this stuff we'll talk about when we get to phonics, like CVC and, and that stuff. But we have these things here that we're reviewing that's going to help you on the multiple choice and this language hopefully will trickle into your essays. Okay.